So I think the Chuck Jones Gallery experience is unique because it's something that connects us to our inner child, right? Um, we, we feel a youthful exuberation when we walk in. We, we notice these films, you know, we notice the characters, we've connected with these things, we've laughed, you know, we've belly laughed at things, we, we've taken something in. And I think what's important about that is to maintain that inner youth, you know, and a, a lot of times, you know, like life can wear on you as you get older, you know, and we lose touch with that. And, and there's, it's a sadness a little bit for me in, in you know, when, when I hear people discuss that, you know, like, oh, it's, I, I used to do this, but I don't, whatever. Uh, and then, but then they find something in the gallery. They find a piece on something. They find a character, they find a rebirth. And I have gotten more people that message me through whatever channel, Instagram, Facebook, that I meet at shows or just in general. And we all, we all, cause I'm this, I'm right along there with them. I'm one of the group, you know, we all have that same kind of youthful exuberation that happens when we walk into a Chuck Jones gallery and we see all this beautiful animation artwork, you know, and these inspired by works on things. And it connects us with that inner child and it, it's, I never want to grow up in there. I never want that little inner child to grow up. And that's what the Chuck Jones gallery experience gives me. Every time I walk in and I'm looking at something on a wall, you know, or something on a display that they've got, and there is, there's a ton of history. This isn't just, uh, it's not just works created, which that's fantastic. You, know, you go into other galleries, they've got beautiful work, but this is history in both art, animation, and it's something that's connected to experiences that we have had. And I think that's what, to me, is the key, is I'm connecting to an experience I had as a child and then as a teenager and then as a grown-up, and I'm still watching the films. I watch them with my, you know, all of my children, and we all laugh, and I still laugh to this day, and it still gives me that useful exuberance. And no other gallery can give you that, and I've been in quite a few. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I am Ben Olson. I'm an artist with the Chuck Jones Gallery, and I am stoked to invite you all to what's going on this weekend uh, if you would like to know more about what we have in store, you're definitely going to watch what we have coming up right here on this video. So Chuck Jones, how has Chuck Jones influenced um, art and, and uh, pretty much everything creative? I'd, I'd say it started way back, you know, when I, I, I remember seeing when we used to have Saturday morning cartoons, there was three hours on a Saturday and it was all Looney Tunes cartoons, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck. And the, the films that I ended up gravitating more toward, I noticed the same director, Charles M. Jones, you know, Rabbit Fire, uh, Robin Hood, Daffy. I mean, go down the list of what's opera doc, everything. And I, and I would notice that like that sense of humor and was something I gravitated a little too more of. And when I got into height, like animation was, became a thing. Like I, I art and I would draw and stuff all the time. And then I would draw what I would see you know, on the TV. And when I got into high school and my art teacher just opened the floodgates with what I could do, I had a bigger library than when I was in junior high. And I remember pulling off, you know, I was looking at books and I would always check the art and animation section and check things out. Well, one of the first two books, it was probably the first book of the two that I checked out was one I saw the spine of, and I have it sitting on my shelf right there. And I looked and I, I'm looking on the spine and I see Chuck Jones and I'm like, Chuck Jones, Chuck him up. What's that? And I pull that off and there's bugs on the front and I checked it out of the library. I checked that book out of the library more than any book. And I would thumb through and I would read, you know, and I would, I was looking at all the drawings and I was drawing drip along. Daffy was the first drawing I did out of his, out of his book. And I would notice the things that he would say and pick up. And it wasn't resonating as much in high school because I was more fascinated with the cartoon aspect of things. Um, and then as I got into college and I started to digest his book a little bit more, it was more on the uh, draw everything, get it all out, creativity, like multiple avenues, that kind of thing. So it started when I was, before I even knew it, when I was five, six, seven years old, watching the films and then actually understanding who it was that was making this and that all that went into it, like the whole thing starts up here and then it gets out. And so Chuck had, Chuck had me from elementary school and before that. So the first time I met Craig was in 2000. I said 2008 in an interview and he was, I think it was 2010. I'm like, I think it was 2008. No, 
I went back, he was right. It was 2010. Craig, you're right. 2010. <laughs> and uh, he came out to an art gallery event out in the Schaumburg area. And uh, they, they had posted something about this and I saw it and we went and we don't get animation stuff out like in the Midwest. Right. So that's kind of like a coastal thing. It was either Florida and what was going on or, or, you know, LA in that area. And I, Chuck Jones grandson is going to be there with Chuck Jones stuff. Uh, I uh, original product. Like I'm a, as you can see in the back sort of here, I'm an original production drawing guy. I love the production drawings. There's baton bunny. I've got a Chuck sketchbook page. I got Chuck stuff, original sketches all over the place. I'm fascinated with the sketches. So to see that they were bringing animation art from the films, right? And Craig was going to be there with the Oscar, one of the Oscars that Chuck won. <laughs> I have to go. So um, I went with my family and we just took part in his stories and what he was saying about Chuck. And, and this was something resonated because this was a hero of mine. Chuck was a hero of mine that I never did get to meet in person, but that influenced me heavily through his writings through what he created and through um, videos once YouTube became a little bit more prevalent and you could start picking that stuff up. So to meet Craig was fantastic. And I nerded out, you know, and I got my first, it was a Marvin, the Martian um, production drawing. And uh, he met him and I got to hold the Oscar and take a picture and was talking to him about my love of, you know, Chuck and what his grandfather influenced on me and, and, and why it's still a part of me. And I remember and he was extremely nice and just like I was the only one in the room and he did that with everybody, right? He's got a gift. And so I remember he made this one statement and we get done talking. We're talking about creativity and how much we love that. And he's telling me a little bit about the Chuck Jones gallery and the Chuck Jones center. And he said, you know, Ben, there's something here. I don't know what it is yet, but there's, there's something you and I, there's something there's, there's a connection thing. And uh, let's see where this goes. Now, mind you, Midwest, don't, not around all this. Chuck's grandson, legacy, right? And there's just me in a gallery with a thing. And he makes that statement. And I do one of these. And uh, uh, what, I have no idea what you're talking about. But yes, <laughs> wherever you want this to go. So a couple of years later, um, I was going through some really crappy stuff in, in life and divorce. And, and that was really weighing heavy and and he was we were chit-chatting about some stuff because he had some shared experiences with me and uh and then invited me out to the chuck jones family gathering for in 2012 which was chuck's 100th birthday and from there it just like after that it was conversations and it was talking about the center and then the gallery and then i got involved with the gallery and then i got picked up and signed um to do this stuff and i want to i don't remember exactly the year but i it's been what is it, 2022 now? I think seven years, eight years. And it's been phenomenal. And what I love, so what I love about that is Chuck's influence and legacy is in multiple ways. Gallery stuff, center stuff, right? The museum, everything that they do. And they don't hold on to it with a tight fist. It's constantly getting things out. Like Chuck was not tight fisted. He was very generous and, and sharing all of his knowledge and, and just listening to people and spending time. And they do the same thing. So to be involved with the center is wonderful because um, I love the work that it does. And we're up in Chicagoland. We're about to launch Central Florida soon. And then the gallery, which I get to do stuff that I grew up loving, and I'm doing it in a way that I never thought before. And why I love working with these guys so much at the Chuck Jones Gallery is, man, it's just go. Like the ideas, the whatever, you know, the making Chuck's thing your own thing and then doing something with it. I mean, this whole Conquer Earth series was when I pitched that, you know, uh, I'm like, well, what would happened after Planet X? And what if we did it in a different style? And then what if this was the thing? And the freedom to creatively express, they give really great notes. They're very encouraging. And it's fast on the turnaround for ideas. Things don't just sit on a shelf. And th there's, I mean, there's a plethora of reasons, but those three, you know, are what for me as a creative is so invigorating because I'm working with characters that I love from a creator that I love and admire, and I'm getting to do it in a way that's my own. So I, it, hands down, like it's, it's a fantastic relationship and, and I love it. So this year for San Diego Comic-Con, which I'm thrilled to death that it's back. 
uh, and doing this virtual in-person mix. Uh, love the fact that the gallery has a pop-up gallery in the gas lamp district. I loved going to the gas lamp gallery, you know, back in the day, especially after cons when, when they, when San Diego would let you just people all over the place. And what I love about what they're doing in this mix is, in, if you can attend in person, you go in in person, there's an experience, obviously, with just walking the gallery and seeing everything. And then there's those of us like me right now in Florida who am not able to make it out there. And yet I'm able to pipe in and experience part of this. And I love this is what I love about the, the mix of virtual and in person is anybody from anywhere can tune in and be a part of this still. So I do it when they do shows and I pipe in with stuff and I, I get to experience it even if I can't attend in person. But how do you do it with the in person if you're going, you know, are you, is it just, are you sitting there watching something? Well, no, let's make that interactive. So what I love about what they're doing this year and having this mix up of things is as I'm doing the show with Fabio and then as I do my own show on Saturday, it's screens up so that I, so that people can obviously see the show. And then I've got cameras pointed to the audience, right? So I can sit there just like I was in person and I'll make comments. And, you know, if somebody has got a question and they're, or maybe I notice something and I can call something out and I'm now we're, we're kind of bridging that gap between just watching something and then actually being able to interact with the crowd. So while I can do that when I'm doing virtual, obviously with questions coming in and stuff like that, I can now do that in um, with the mix of virtual and in person. So this year for the San Diego Comic-Con lineup, which I'm stoked for, um, we've got some amazing people coming up and it starts off on Thursday with Stephen Reese and Trisha Buchanan Benson. And I've met Stephen. I've gotten to be at a part in events that he's been at. What a brilliant creative, obviously a part of the longest running televised show ever in The Simpsons. Imagine the creativity that you've got to keep pumping as you come up with new and current ideas for storylines. Phenomenal artist and just a solidly cool guy. I love his whole design sense, the whole yin yang that he brings to some of his character pieces that he does. Stephen Reese is just an awesome guy. And then Trisha Buchanan Benson who is a phenomenal artist as well and does a great job of storytelling within her pieces on classics that we really love and pulling elements out of those films and then bringing them to life on whatever medium she decides. And it just, it's phenomenal. So Steven and Trisha on Thursday are fantastic. And then on Friday, Fabio, do you even need to say the last name? Maybe not, you know, Fabio Napoleone, we'll do it anyway. And uh, I have, man, do I love this guy, right? And it's not just throwing sunshine for the sake of throwing sunshine. I love his creativity. I love the ideas. I love where things start from. I love the stories behind everything. There is so much to this guy and what he creates. And I've got his pieces around the studio as well because there's been stuff that I'm like, I got to have that. I'm like, and when even when we're on the show, Scott, Scott, put that aside. Is that one still available? Mine, just put it on my account. I realize we're, t- we're, we're, on, we're on, we're live. I understand that. On my account, this is not just me saying things, please charge my card, right? And I've had, I've had to preface that ahead of the show, but like when I tell you to charge my card, please charge my card. Don't let anybody else get that. So we've got Fabio. He's got some great new releases. I've gotten to see them. And uh, I'm stoked to have another conversation. We end up rabbit holing all over the place. Uh, he is, as his kids put it, when we met for the first time in February, after several shows, hours long, chatting back and forth after a year and a half, we meet in February um, at Festival of the Arts. And I had, I think it was his son that said, after meeting me in person, I was like, wow, you two are a lot alike. <laughs> You're like, no, nah, we might share some personality traits. So we got uh, Fabio coming up on Friday and then we've got Eric Bauza. What can you say about Eric that probably hasn't been said a thousand times. What an incredible talent. What a great story behind what he does. And all this life that he is breathing into the Looney Tunes now current day. And he is generous with the voices. Oh my goodness. Quick-witted, hilarious, and one of the most down-to-earth awesome guys that I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. Eric Bauza, you're out after the Fabio interview is done. Eric comes on right after you get a chance, make sure you're there for Eric Bowles also, because it is something that will not disappoint. And we have Saturday. Saturday is little old me. And we're going to roll some new stuff, some new releases. Conquer Earth has another planetary exhibition coming with another set, which I'm stoked for. And then some other surprises that I can't say yet, but I will show on Saturday.
So what I'm looking forward to in this whole Comic-Con weekend, which I love the fact that Chuck Jones Gallery does not just a day. They do several days, several. It's a whole mix of experiences. I'm looking forward to just nerding out. Like, this is my nerd time, man. I mean, my nerd time's all the time, but now it's concentrated at this point. And I'm looking forward to new and um, interesting stories from the artist, artwork that I've never seen before that I can just Google at, and I'll probably end up picking up something as I usually do. And that whole experience of this being in the same crowd when we're, you know, between virtual and in person of all this kind of stuff on people who just love this pop culture, you know, I'm not going to say revolution because it's been around for a while, but this whole pop culture movement and everything that it creates. And we're all, again, it's, it's satisfying all of our inner childs, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And I know I, and I don't go in with expectations to stuff. I'm like, well, let's just see what happens. Um, but it's never disappoints. And I've already got my expectations set. So if you're in person in San Diego, you're there, you're experiencing the con. And I mean, what, what a great district just to walk in the gas lamp district, especially in between events and releases and all that kind of stuff. But why it's a must stop for the Chuck Jones gallery during this time is because you're going to see things that you maybe not seen before. You're going to connect with things that are going to bring you back to stuff that you love and enjoy that maybe you didn't even realize existed. And maybe some things that you might know that existed that you've never seen in person before. And you're going to experience not only that, but just the camaraderie of people that come together. It's a community of things. It's a community of people who love and live and breathe this stuff. And, you know, as mentioned before in the history of things. So it's not just going to something to look at. It's uh, like, well, that's an interesting thing. And you're connecting with something and be like, did you know that this was behind that? So you'll learn a little something, which to me connects me even more to whatever that thing is, you know, a Looney Tunes film, something from DC or, you know, uh, Marvel or whatever they've got going on, you know, at the gallery that they're showcasing. And you're able to connect with something, learn a little bit more and satisfy that inner child. So if you're there in person uh, at San Diego Comic-Con, you, you don't want to miss this. Like I, I never missed a Chuck Jones opportunity, Chuck Jones, you know, to hit the gallery and see what they had. So I think what's important too is this space for Comic-Con is a pop-up gallery at the Spirit Gallery. Um, they have a permanent location, a little, a little Italy. And for this experience, it's an incredible space. They're going to pop up this thing at Spirit. And if you're there, drop by. Uh, stop in, experience something there. We, we've got shows running because we're broadcasting both Fabio's and mine as we're doing it. And then afterwards, or if you maybe weren't able to make the show or are there just after Comic-Con, their permanent gallery is in Little Italy and you can drop by there anytime. Comic-Con obviously is our little mecca of the summer of what we're putting together. But really, uh, Chuck Jones Gallery has events and specials like this going on all year round. So make sure that you're checking in with what's going on in Santa Fe, what's going on in Orange County, um, obviously San Diego, you know, all the galleries that they have and, and the experiences they do pop up in uh, pop ups in Palm Springs, I believe, too. There's all kinds of events. And then they're bringing in artists with unique takes on all kinds of things, um, as well as just some fantastic pieces from the archives, which I lose my mind on you know when they pull this stuff out and i'm looking at things that were created by chuck you know and his team originals and you're just staring at them that goes on all year round so make sure that you're staying in touch with that because the chuck jones gallery is putting on events all year round and all to satisfy the inner child so part of what connected me to chuck you know and when i was watching the films and you know reading through his books and the things that I would see even in interviews was how he approached all of this. And, you know, to find out that when he was, you know, him and Mike Maltese were writing and that either they're putting these films together, they were creating characters or, you know, however that was going, they were doing things that were funny to them, to them. It wasn't, you know, they weren't talking down to people. They weren't talking, you know, they weren't creating down to a level. They were doing things that they thought were hilarious, interesting, entertaining, and, and which is why when we see these things, when we're, when we're young, and then as we get older, it just gets even funnier. And then what I love about Chuck's whole philosophy on creativity was just do, just do it, draw, draw everything, create stuff, think differently. You know, Chuck wasn't just about the drawing and the animating, like he would go up to JPL and he would talk to scientists and cause he was fascinated with how they came up with things. 
and, and the creativity behind problem solving on that. He would, doctors, nurses, you know, he, there, there were things, it didn't have to be, what I loved about Chuck and his approach to creativity wasn't, wasn't just, creativity isn't just art. And he was filling his mind with all kinds of things. He was reading constantly. He was meeting with unique and different people in different industries. And that sparked his creativity as he kept going. So it's this whole, you know, cyclical thing that one feeds the other. And the second part to that was Chuck's generosity. And like I had mentioned before, Chuck is not a closed fist dude. He's very much an open hand. And the way Chuck would be with people, whether he's doing a little doodle for them or whether he's spending with time with kids in the hospital and just trying to bring a little bit of joy to their day as he's just spending time. Like time was time is the most important thing you could give to a child is what Chuck would say. And he would just spend time with him. He would do some drawing with him. And, he, and that kind of thing is why I'm connected to the gallery. It's why we do what we do at the center. It's those philosophies that Chuck had, his legacy, which continues to move forward, has impacted us right? And now we are moving that legacy forward. And, uh, and I just, I'm so grateful that I get to take part of this on a daily basis. So I think what I'm, what I'm excited about for the weekend is one, obviously, this is the biggie of the big for Comic Cons. And to have the lineup that we do, and to be able to experience these things, uh, and to have the opportunity now to change it up a little bit with the in person virtual where we get to interact with an in-person audience, even if we're all the way out here in Florida. Uh, I'm stoked for that. I can't wait to have these conversations. I, I, I might even bust out my Holy Grail from Indiana Jones in the last crusade. Uh, maybe I'll drink from that this time. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I have to seal this because I'm that gold paint might flake off and I might drink that. That would be bad. So um, I'm looking forward to hanging out with Fabio and doing that interview. The two of us that dude is awesome and hilarious. And it's, it's, it's a conversation of hilarity. And then my show where I'm able to, I'm terrible at keeping secrets on things. I'm terrible at holding things. And the fact that I have things done that are on the other side of this paper that I can't show you yet, but it's there. Well, maybe I can't because I announced, you know, stuff like this. Uh, I, and there's more, but I can't show that, but I can show this. And there's a collector mini. This is the this is the original, but there will be a collector mini of that to for the show. I'm stoked. So for me, this is anxiousness as the gallery's like, don't post that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. So I'm I'm chomping at the bit. I am so excited about this, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all there for San Diego Comic Con weekend with Chuck Jones Gallery. <laughs>